So hello everyone, today we're going to be solving a few physics sums taken from the year 2018 and the month October November. The paper code uh, is 22. Right. So the first sum here says that an object of mass 3 kgs traveling at a speed of 6 meters per second collides with an object of mass 2 kgs traveling in the opposite direction at a speed of 2 meters per second. And it says that the objects stick together during the collision. And it asks, what is the speed and direction of the combined mass after the collision? Well, this is a question about momentum. It's trying to test you about the law of conservation of momentum. And what that states is that the momentum, that's P, that's, that's just a symbol, it looks like P, initial, so the initial momentum, uh, or you can say the momentum before the collision, is equal to the momentum after the collision, or the final momentum. All right, and that's the basic law. That's the underlying principle behind all of this. Well, what's the total momentum of the system um, before the collision? That's just going to be the momentum of this object, which uh, we'll call A, and the other object, B. But before I we compute the momentums, we should uh, we should realize that um, that momentum is a vector quantity. That means it has a magnitude and a direction. All right. It has a magnitude and a direction, and uh, that means uh, uh, this object A is moving with a velocity to the right. So and and so that object A has a different uh, direction, has a different direction than object B. So we'll assign a positive value with a velocity to the right and a negative value with a velocity to the left. So the total momentum, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum of A, which is its mass, 3 into its velocity, positive 6. So 3 into positive 6 plus the, the momentum of object B, which is 2 plus, so we'll just bracket this to make it clearer, plus 2 into negative 2, because it's moving in the opposite direction. So what's uh, 3 into 6? Well, that's just 18, all right? And what's uh, 2 into negative 2? That's negative 4. So the total momentum of um, so the total momentum of the system is 14 kg uh, meters per second. So that's the unit of momentum. So you know that this is the momentum after the collision, right? You know that. That's the law of conservation of momentum. And you also know that the objects stick together. So A and B, that's A here and that's B here, sort of form this this third mass, this different new mass called C, which we'll call C. And since they sort of smush together, they stick together, their masses combine. So this 3 and this 2, they, they add up to 5. This new object um, has a mass of 5 kilograms. So we say that, um, so I'll just uh, use a different color, just hold on. Yeah, uh, so the, the, the momentum, the final momentum is equal to the total mass we will we'll, we'll just write as m into the velocity the final velocity the final uh, momentum is 14 the mass is um, the mass is 3 plus 2 that's 5 and the velocity is unknown now uh, that, that simply means that v the answer the, the they're looking for the speed of the combined object that's going to be equal to 15 uh, 14 divided by 5 and that's just equal to 2.8 so obviously straight up we can cancel out two of these options because they're just plain wrong the magnitude is off however how do we know if it's going um, to the left or to the right well we just look at the definition uh, we'll just look at what we defined earlier we said that a velocity to the right has to be positive so the momentum has to be positive and a velocity to the left has to be uh, negative so the momentum of that object moving to the left will be negative and since um, yeah uh, and since this this momentum is positive and since and therefore the velocity is also positive you know that the object is moving to the right so you can cancel the left this option here and so D has to be your final answer so D is the answer now we'll move on to uh, the second sum the second tricky sum so let me just go there uh, let me just scroll down all right so um, the second sum says um, uh, that there's a pendulum here. Okay, a simple pendulum. Uh, 
and uh, the pendulum swings from P to Q to R and back to P. So it swings from its maximum height P to its minimum height Q and back to its maximum height. Now, let me just redraw this pendulum here. When you look at a pendulum, it sort of slows down when it reaches its maximum height. And all that means in terms of energy transfer is that all of the pendulum's energy is in the form of gravitational potential energy at its maximum height. And then when it swings and converts all of that potential energy into kinetic energy uh, at, this, at, at its minimum point, where it's at its lowest, that means it's moving its fastest because kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So whenever the pendulum has the highest amount of um, kinetic energy, it has to move the fastest. So point Q is maximum, it has, point Q is when the pendulum bob has its maximum kinetic energy and, and P is when it has its maximum potential energy. I'll just write P, uh, PE for potential energy and max, okay? So they're, they're telling us that um, uh, from uh, Q, where there's zero potential energy because it's at its lowest and, it, and its fastest, mind you, um, the distance between Q, its lowest and its highest is 10 centimeters. Well, all right, we can simply apply the potential energy formula here because all of its energy, all of the pendulum's energy is in the form of potential energy. So let's, let's just apply that formula. And all that is, all that says is that the potential energy of the bob in this case is equal to the mass of the bob into the, the gravitational constant, uh, depending on the planet, uh, the planet it's on, sorry, and the height at which it is at. So the height is 10 centimeters, which we'll convert to uh, 0 0.1 meters, you just divide by, um, by 100. The mass is m, so we leave that, we don't know that. Uh, the gravitational constant on Earth is 10 newtons per kg. That's that's just a calculated known value. And the height uh, that the bob is from Q is uh, 0 0.1 meters. So 0 0.1 into 10, that's just 1. Uh, because 0 0.1 is 1 upon 10, and 1 upon 10 into 10 is 1. So the potential energy um, <clears throat> at P, or rather all the energy of the pendulum, is equal to m joules, joules being the unit of energy, all right? Now, what you know is that um, at P, all of its energy is potential energy, 100%. And at Q, all of its energy is kinetic energy, 100%. That means all of this potential energy, m, is being converted to kinetic energy. So, we just rewrite that as, um, so that, so let's just rewrite this, okay? Let me just use a better color because that's not really visible. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, this is better. So the kinetic energy of a system is equal to half into the mass, um, or sorry, of the bob is equal to its uh, mass into its velocity squared into half. So half mv squared. And since the kinetic energy at point, uh, point Q is m, we rewrite this as m is equal to 0.5 mv squared. Now this is simple algebra, we can take m on the other side and it cancels or we can divide both sides by m and we can, um, uh, we can, uh, so yeah, we can take, uh, we can multiply both sides by 2. So that gives us 2 is equal to v squared, uh, v being the velocity, so v is equal to root 2. So there you go, we have the speed, the velocity of of the bob at point Q, where its kinetic energy is at its maximum. So what is root 2? Well, that's just 1.41. And what option matches this? C does. So C is the answer. Now we'll move on to the last and final question. Right. So um, the question here says, a block of iron mass m. So I'll just draw a two-dimensional block, you know, like this, a solid block of mass m is heated and gains 10 kilojoules of internal energy. Now internal energy is just, it's the total energy of all the little molecules and atoms, uh, sorry, just molecules inside the, um, sorry, atoms, uh, forgive me. It's, it's, it's the combined, it's the total energy of all the molecules inside and it, it basically takes into consideration, uh, consideration 
the total kinetic energy and potential energy of all these little uh, vibrating particles and that's um, that's a measure of heat right um, so the higher the internal energy of a block the the hotter it is um, that that's that's the, an intuitive way of understanding internal energy so um, the temperature of the block after it supplied 10 kilojoules of internal energy rises so it rises by so it has an initial temperature and it rises by theta degree celsius all right and the question goes on to say a second block of iron of mass 2m so it's twice the mass is heated and gains 5 kilojoules of internal energy what is the temperature block uh, uh, rise of the second block so i'll just draw a bigger block right here in a different color to help uh, illustrate the point so a bigger block because its mass is two times uh, the mass of the first block so 2m and mind you they're made of the same material i'm just um, yeah just make sure just understand that this is iron and this is iron too i'm just drawing them in different colors it's given five kilojoules uh, of internal energy so it's a the question is asking us what is the temperature rise of the second block well Firstly, let's think of this intuitively. Uh, it has a very easy intuitive side to it. I mean, there's a very easy intuitive explanation um, to the sum, right? So think about this. If you have a block, which is much larger than this block, um, obviously it takes, it's going to take a lot more energy to heat it to the same level, right? It's like uh, you, um, it takes very little energy to heat a little puddle, but it takes a lot of energy uh, to heat a huge lake, right? So a little puddle here, if you heat this by 10 joules, it'll rise like probably what? Uh, it'll rise by what? 3 degrees Celsius. Let's just say that. It's just hypothetical. Let's say you take a massive reservoir, a massive lake, and you heat it by 10 joules. It's not going to, there's not going to be a temperature rise at all, like a measurable temperature rise. It's going to be probably like 0 0.000000001. You, you get the point. So think of it in the same way. If you're heating this um, block, less and it's bigger you can't have a larger temperature rise so you immediately are going to cut out these two options now let's think of this now we can um you know um narrow down to these two options a and b and the way we're going to do it is um we're going to apply the specific uh, heat capacity formula okay and that just says and that the, the specific heat capacity of any um, material is the energy supplied the energy supplied is equal to the mass of that object into its specific heat capacity into the rise in temperature. So this is the thing we're looking for. We know all of this. We're looking for this. Well, in the first object, mass, the mass is m. And uh, q is 10. So I'll just uh, scroll down a little bit and find some space because we're, we're running out of space. So we rewrite this as 10 is equal to m capital M into C, C is just a uh, constant, into delta T is the, the variable we're looking for. So 10 upon MC is equal to uh, delta T. Now, this applies the same, uh, the same thing uh, applies, sorry, just one second. The same thing applies to the second block, except, um, except that its energy is half, so it's Q upon 2 or 5 is equal to uh, mc delta t mc delta t the the m is 2m so that's 5 upon 2mc is equal to delta t now let's compare these two equations 2 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 and 10 divided by 1 is 10 so um comparing 10 uh, to 2.5 you can clearly see that um, the energy, uh, the, the the temperature gain by uh, okay, that's a plane uh, flying outside. But the energy gained, uh, sorry, the temperature rise is of uh, the heavier object, and uh, the one uh, supply less energy to is going to be one fourth less than the smaller object. And so, that's your answer.